there's an element of risk in doing this voyage because this was a, a very violent eruption, the likes of which the world hadn't seen for many, many decades. Um, the risk of uh, erupting through the water column is probably the most likely risk. Um, you can also get large discharges of gas, um, which makes um, not particularly buoyant for ships. Um, and sometimes you can get pumice rafts and, and a few additional things like that. And the obvious risks, of course, that um, any mariner faces when they come to um, small islands in the middle of the Pacific is shoaling or shallow water. Initially, what we hope to do is to circumnavigate the rim of the caldera. Um, the caldera is about five kilometers in diameter and will stay at about 200 meters water depth. And the reason we do that is because that's a depth that mitigates most eruptions. It's that pressure of the water column sitting on top of any eruption tends to suppress it so it doesn't reach the surface. So we'll do that first. Then we're most likely to go right through the center of the caldera because previously maps showed that that was the deepest part of the water column over the caldera itself, about 150 meters. Uh, once we've done that and we've established that um, there is some reasonable depth there, then the, the, the ship will map continuously across the caldera and then come back. But it'll always come back over a piece of ground that it had mapped previously. So there's, there's known bathymetry or seafloor under the hull at all times. We're also going to ensure that each night that we're parked off the volcano. So we'll, we'll go some distance probably 10 nautical miles off the volcano, so we're never actually sitting stationary on the volcano at night time. We will also ensure that, equally, all the work is done in daylight hours, so we can see what's going on around us. So us on the boat will be the first people really to know if something's happening, if there's a change. This is an extremely opportunistic, very rare event. Um, these eruptions, for example, these, these uh, part subaerial, part submarine eruptions are quite rare. And this one was particularly violent. And it did a couple of strange things, you know, produced an incredible blast in the atmosphere, but also dislodged a lot of material. So it was all sliding off the volcano and disrupted a lot of telecommunication cables. So it's a very rare event, probably once in a lifetime for a, a career scientist. So for us, this is an opportunity that we can't miss, but obviously we need to follow all the protocols to do it safely. So we're here in Hicks Bay, up in the northern part of East Cape. We had a little bit of a lumpy ride for a couple of days coming up here, and we got about 70 nautical miles north of here and realised that uh, we can't hear the multi-beam. The multi-beam's not um, talking to the, the software. So we don't know what's going wrong. We don't think it's a software problem. We think it's a hardware problem. So you can see behind me there's a vessel coming in with three divers in from Auckland who are going to go and have a look at the bottom of the hull and check out the unit and see if we can, we'll go from there. So hopefully it can be resolved. If not, it's a bit of a, a game breaker. So multi-beam unit effectively maps the sea floor like we map topography on land, but it uses sound signals to bounce off the sea floor to tell us what the shape of that land is. For this mission, it's, uh, its importance is about a 10 out of 10, and without it, it's probably a bust. What do you say? Not there. Jesus. So it's got busted off. So we've just heard that it's um, got broken off the transducer, so that's the worst possible thing that could happen, which means um, obviously we have no multi-beam. So if we have no multi-beam, we have no voyage at the moment. So unless there's a plan C, um, this might be the end of the road for us, which is really unfortunate after all this effort. How do I feel about it? So, <laughs> how do I feel about all of this? Well, very mixed emotions, I guess. It's been an enormous amount of effort to get to this point, and obviously if it's um, 
if it's kaput, then um, it's all over and that'll be very sad. But I can't fault everything that's been done by everybody. A tremendous amount of effort by all. It's guttering, of course. I mean, enormous amount of effort by many, many people to get us to where we are today. Um, all in a very short amount of time. We usually do this over about 18 months. We did it in six weeks. So a lot of people came to the party and a lot of people uh, really performed. But in the end, you can still be caught out by something that was completely unpredictable.